So hi, everybody. I'm really curious. Uh, are you interested in learning about the best brain health tip that you never knew? Well, we're going to find out about this because we're joined today by an expert on this, Dr. Michael S. Trayford. And uh, so Dr. Trayford is a board certified, is board certified in chiropractic neurology and neurofeedback. He's the founder and director of clinical operations at Apex Brain Centers in Asheville, North Carolina. His primary area is a focus in clinical medicine, a clinical practice, associated research and teaching our brain injury, learning and behavioral disorders with a focus on addictive and compulsive behaviors and cognitive impairment. So I'm really, really looking forward to this. This is Eddie with A Mindful Emergence, where we offer simple steps for becoming whole using mindfulness, movement, and breathing practices. And if you like this video, I invite you to check out other videos. Uh, obviously, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss upcoming videos. We release twice a week on Monday and Thursdays, and we'd love to hear your comments. So please leave them uh, in the comment section below. So let's get started uh, with Dr. Uh, Trayford. And uh, at the expense of sounding terribly obsequious, I'm going to say that Michael, as I know him on a personal level, is also probably one of the smartest people I know. <laughs> so no pressure. But it's obvious that this is something that you've really studied and practiced for a long time. What is it you do at Apex Brain Centers? How do you help people? Um, you know, ultimately, we help people help themselves. And that's really the most important part. You know, I, I tell people all the time after 20 years at this, you know, we'd, we'd love seeing you, but we hope to never see you again in that. Uh, you know, we, we, we have short term immersive brain rehabilitation experiences focused on the physical, cognitive, neurological, metabolic aspects of brain health, um, the whole gamut of, of, of neurodiagnostics and therapies. Um, you know, we can get into it another time, but uh, we're seeing people multiple hours per day for short periods of time, five, 10, 15 days for the things that you mentioned and um, getting them back into their lives with resources and home-based programs to continue the progress once they leave us. And, you know, 20 years at this, we find five, 10, 15 days of hard work can um, outshine, you know, six, seven, eight, 10 months of, of you know, smaller, uh, smaller, uh, smaller frequency work, I should say. Yeah. Do you get people with sports injuries? Uh, we do primarily uh, from a, from a brain injury standpoint, you know, we're, we're the things you mentioned, traumatic brain injury, uh, addictive and compulsive behaviors, cognitive impairment, that's really what we see. We're not dealing necessarily with the pain side of things mm -hmm. unless it's associated with, but uh, concussion, post-concussion syndrome and sure. nearly brain injury. Yeah. So you have a wide spectrum of people that you work with. Yeah, but uh, you know, overarching, a lot of these things are connected. Mm -hmm. And you're a published journal contributor, author, international lecturer, proud recipient of the 2017-2018 Functional Neurologist of the Year Award from the International Association of Functional Neurology and Rehabilitation. I had to scan through this to make sure I could pronounce all the words in this. Uh, you serve patients uh, around the world, physical, cognitive, metabolic rehabilitation experiences. Are you able during the pandemic to meet with per, uh, people uh, face to face? Do you do some work uh, virtually? How does that been going for you? We've done quite a bit more virtually, but at the end of the day, you know, 80, 90% of what we see is face to face. So people, you know, certainly more cancellations with COVID because most of our people have to hop on planes or drive long distances and come. And if they have to quarantine last minute for some reason or another, uh, you know, that's just the nature of things mm -hmm. right now, but yeah. uh, a lot of face to face or mask to mask, right? Yeah. So to speak. Yeah, literally. So I gave people a tease. And, uh, you know, the work that Margaret and I do is we want to offer simple steps that anyone can do to become more whole. And uh, so what I am asking you is talk about a simple step, the best brain health tip that they never knew about. What is it and how does it work? Absolutely. And and I have to, I love that you and Margaret are doing this because you know, it's, it's nice to step out from behind the big fancy equipment and, and all of that and get back to basics. I've been doing this a long time. And, and I always come back to what always worked when we didn't have the big fancy equipment. Um, and the one I'm going to talk about today is something that I've used for over 20 years. And that is gargling. 
you know, it's a, there you go. He's got his cup. All right. We're gonna, I don't know if I'm going to demo for you. I just want to keep. I'm... We'll, do, we'll do resonant gargling across the, uh, the, the, the interweb here. Um, so yes, gargling is, is one of the most powerful neurological rehabilitation techniques out there bar none. And it costs you nothing but the, uh, the glass to put the water in unless you want to just take it right out of the faucet. But, you know, so many of the people that you deal with, that we deal with, um, we're, we're dealing with things like hypervigilance, uh, with anxiety, with aggression, with addiction, all of these things, you know, people are just ramped up beyond belief. So they have their sympathetic nervous system that's firing real high all the time, and their parasympathetic relaxation system that's firing real low. What we need to do is we need to ramp up the relaxation mm -hmm. response and dampen the stress response, okay? And the best way to do that is, you know, you can Google vagus nerve stimulation and you'll find all kinds of things you can do. But at the end of the day, gargling is one of the most powerful ways to stimulate that vagus nerve through different means and to get that relaxation response. And it's also interruptive, intrusive. So when people are really getting kind of bent on something, they can just simply throw some water in the back of the throat gargle vigorously uh, and it's, you know, much less disruptive than, you know, throwing cold water in somebody's face, right? Mm. Same concept, cold water creates a relaxation response and also just kind of heads things off at the pass. So gargling, what does it do? Uh, number one, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're taking your mind to something other than what it is that's creating the anxieties and everything mm. like that. So that alone starts to create a shift, but the rest is all physiological and very strong physiological influences over this relaxation, rest and digest response or parasympathetic response. So just getting the water in the back of the throat and we tell people gargle loud and proud. I mean, I, I tell people, I wanna hear you from a mile away because that means you're activating from the diaphragm all the way up. You know, putting it in the back of the throat and you know, doing that kind of thing isn't gonna do a bit of good. You've gotta do it from the diaphragm, from the belly all the way up and uh, as long as you can. And what happens is, you know, you've heard of the larynx, uh, basically is a lot of control over respiration, but also phonation, getting, you know, getting sounds out. Uh, the vagus nerve sends all these little branches off that control muscles in the larynx that connect to our vocal cords. So that vocalization aspect through the gargling, which has its own benefits I'll talk about, really starts to get direct act activation of that vagus nerve. It's about one of the only ways you can get in and directly activate it without electrical stimulation or others. Uh, now the, the, the pressure component of the gargling where you create that pressure to, to do that, that will create intra-abdominal and intra, uh, intra, uh, intra-pleural pressure. So pressure within the chest cavity and abdominal cavity, which will have a physical stimulation or uh, activation of that vagus nerve. So it's kind of, you're getting it from different angles, but it's going to activate that vagus nerve. There's no way around it. Um, and it's the extreme of this is, you know, if you've ever, everybody has vomited at one point or another, when you vomit, you feel incredibly relaxed after you vomit because you've had that massive increase in pressure, mm -hmm. you've had that you know, projectile, you've had the sounds, everything coming with it, and now you've got nothing but relaxation response being activated. So we can do this without the, the messiness. Uh, of the, <laughs> without the nausea, maybe. And I'll tell you, some people are so impaired that we actually have to go in the back of the throat. Um, they can't gargle because they can't physically hold water in their throat. So mm -hmm. we have to go back and create gag responses to get that activation. And it works just as good. But, you know, gargling is the easiest and best way. So a cup of water. What you're going to do is put the water back in. And that's it. How long is recommended? You're going to start out. Most people, when they start, they can't do more than two or three seconds. So you start at two or three built to five, mm. built to eight, built to 10, kind of like breathing exercises. Yeah. A lot of people can't breathe out for more than two or three seconds. And then if you do it long enough, you can do it for 20 seconds. Um, but right there instantly, I got this kind of flush feeling. I get getting blood to the periphery. Uh, and I just feel a little bit more chill just doing that. I, it's been a while since I've gargled. I need to take my own advice and do it a little mm. bit more. But it's intrusive. Um, it can be done as a repetitive exercise. So when we see people that are in this constant hypervigilance, dog chasing the tail, perse perse you know, perseveration, uh, anxiety. We can have people do that as an exercise, just like I did, repeat it two to three times every hour. 
for days on end, just condition parasympathetic response. Every time you do it, you shut down the fight or flight sympathetic mm. response. So, um, you know, it can be done preemptively. Uh, it can be done uh, in, you know, uh, to interrupt a behavior, but it can also be done as an exercise over time to build that relaxation. Wow. You know, I have to say, uh, I have been studying the whole autonomic nervous system and different ways to self-regulate and come into the window of tolerance, you know, for years and years and years. Right. And as a meditation teacher and a yoga teacher and working with people in recovery, I have never heard this before. When you say a tip for brain health that you never knew, right. I mean, do you ever say this to somebody and they go, oh, yeah, I knew about that? Probably once not. In a, once in a while, you know, it's, but, you know, really, no. Uh, no. Because, and it blow, it boggles my mind because it's so easy. It's Simple. So easy. I have a friend of mine as a nurse practitioner down in uh, Georgia, and uh, he had shirts in his clinic printed up that said, uh, it said, you gargle, bro. And uh, <laughs> just to get people to say, what is that? And now he can explain it, what it is. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I'm having a session later with someone online who uh, struggles a lot with panic attacks. And of course, we've offered some suggestions on how to how to work with that. But if somebody is actually going right into a panic attack, this would be a good solution or a good option? If they can catch it, if they can get the symptoms early enough before mm. panic attacks, people might have, you know, some numbness in the nose or the face, or they might feel themselves hyperventilating. We have, you know, other interruptive techniques for that. Even bag breathing, you know, can be a really powerful mm. tool for heading off a panic attack. We tend to lean towards bag breathing for panic attacks because mm. there's almost always a hyperventilation component. Um, so just appreciating the chemistry and the physiology um, of what's happening, because if pre people are breathing off too much carbon dioxide, you know, it might be too late to worry about the gargling and we don't want them choking on that. I used to get a sweaty, I used to have really bad panic attacks uh, before I got therapeutic interventions to work with that. Uh, I used to get sweaty, my heart would race, and I would have a sense of, uh, it's a trauma thing for me, where I would start feeling confined. Is it at that point, is it too late to do the gargling, you think, or for that? No, I don't think so. I think gargling and certain tactical breathing exercises can be highly powerful. But you mm. just with the gargling, we just want to make sure people are stable enough to not run the risk of inhaling the water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because if somebody's too worked up, they may actually, you know, they may inhale the water and, you know, not so much risk with that. But we don't want anybody developing any, uh, you know, any any lung infections or anything. Like right, that. right. That's so interesting. So simple. Anybody can do it. I mean, are there any contraindications at all on this? Well, in populations that we see, particularly uh, folks with severe brain injury that might be going through something called neural storming, um, they just don't have the capacity uh, to do that. But over time, we can build it up. We can do little bits at a time. Mm -hmm. We can have them doing it without the water. And eventually, it's helping the same muscles that create the create speech. So it's helping their speech therapy and everything along as well. Gar mm -hmm. You know, music teachers know about gargling. Mm -hmm. Speech therapists know about gargling. Primary care physicians and, and, and most other people don't know about gargling. But when you work with people that are in that world, they understand how it relaxes yeah, somebody yeah. before singing or before acting. Theater people know about gargling. Huh. So what about kids? Can they do it too? Absolutely. We've got kids gargling all the time, all the time. And they love it because they'll really belt it out. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. I can have some fun with this. Hey, Just look no at running, me. <laughs> no, no running down the halls and gargling at the same time, though. No, we don't do that. Okay. Well, yeah. that is fantastic. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I love a day when I learn something new. And I, I learned this, this is so great. And uh, I may offer it to people that we work with. There you go. You yeah, because it. you know what, Michael, people, they don't want information, they mm. want coping strategies, right? 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 We, we want to know what can we do when we're struggling? Right? And when and we're stuck? I'll tell you, Eddie, I, this is one technique in addition to, um, you know, the bag breathing and even journaling where people have told me that that has in fact saved their life. Right. Gargling has saved their life. I mean, that is pretty wild to hear that Something when so somebody's in, in crisis mode and they want to go use a substance or, you know, do something 
uh, potentially bad for themselves and they do that to interrupt that they have potentially just saved themselves from an overdose or yeah or... yeah serious business right now i mean uh with the fentanyl all the stuff on the street and the high risk and uh yeah definitely could save someone's life so tell us about uh, i know you have a lot of exposure on social media youtube how can people listen to your podcasts contact you uh, sure. find out more about what you're doing, Michael. Um, pretty much if you just, you know, apexbraincenters.com, uh, that's our website and you can get to all different avenues through there. Uh, but if you just Google, uh, if you just go to whatever platform, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, just type in apex brain centers and we're there. Our most active presence is, um, is on Instagram for sure. But, um, I've got a, a podcast who'd love to get you on someday. Train your brain podcast.com. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's a P E X apex brain centers with an S mm -hmm. yep. centers with an X apex brain centers. And I will put the information, all of you watching the video, we'll put the links in the description below, uh, so that you can access, uh, Dr. Trayford's, uh, website and, and YouTube channel and find out more about the amazing work that you're doing uh, over there at Apex. So Michael, Dr. Trayford, thank you so much for joining us. This was great. Appreciate it very much. Awesome, Eddie. Appreciate you. Thank you. You bet.